Okay, we have dealt with the history of the Philippines. As you have seen, it has actually been recorded as Ophir and Tarshish. No other land has history such as that. And in this video, we will complete this timeline all the way from the beginning to 1891, even. This is good. Welcome to 100 Clues. The Philippines is the ancient land of gold known as Ophir in the Bible and history. No, it's no fable, and this has already been proven in full in the God Culture Solomon's Gold series. At the request of many viewers, we have pulled out 100 compelling clues, really proofs or evidences, from this research in which we will highlight briefs of the most compelling points. And yes, there are over 100. These videos are for those who have not had time to watch Solomon's Gold series. Also great for small groups, even in churches or house churches or whichever direction, and for teaching in schools as they're 15 to 20 minutes, roughly each. And easy to share to friends and family, especially skeptics, whom we welcome. This brief video cannot replace that 50 video series, but, and it cannot prove the way that it does, but this will be very effective nonetheless. So go there for full evidence, but now, part 42 of our series, 100 Clues, The Philippines is Ophir. One clue at a time. Let's start from the beginning. A little review and we'll add to it in the end so you can see the concurrent cycle all the way through history. Yes, the very beginning of life itself. The ancient land of Genesis 2 called Havila, the land of Adam and Eve for Eve, who in Hebrew is Hava. Havila is a variant of Hava, which means one who suffers pain that brings forth, which is childbirth. We located this land by the three resources of Genesis 2, gold, Philippines, number one in all of history. Pearl, Philippines, number one by far in all of history. And the onyx stone and marble used in construction, which the Philippines has the very strongest. Number one, onyx and marble on all of earth from Romblon, in fact. Yes, even stronger than Italy. We then covered that Jeremiah equates Tarshish, the land of silver, with Upaz, which is Ophir, gold, the land of gold. And Upaz is what? The gold of the Pisan River, and that is called what land? Havila, land of Adam and Eve, the Philippines, which we saw the Book of Jubilees calls the land of creation itself, which we even prove out scientifically. This is Ophir and Tarshish, all the same through history, even though the name has changed. Originally, the land of creation was called Elda. Then it was called Havila, named after Hava, Eve. And then it was named after the days of Noah, when he was lifted, the ark was taken into the continental Asia, and then his relatives return years later, Ophir, Sheba, and even Tarshish, and the land is then named for them. Then we saw the gold used to overlay the walls of the temple and palace were the gold of Ophir, right? Ah, but they're also referred to as another name. Second Chronicles gives us a huge clue that this is Parvaim, which specifically is Safar, where Joktan's sons migrated and the Garden of Eden, where Enoch was found by his son Methuselah, all full circle. We showed you the Greeks even mapped out the location of their isles of gold and silver in the Orient as the Philippines, Mindanao and Luzon specifically. The Philippines has always been Ophir and Tarshish. Now how do we connect this? 
Because Josephus tells us this Isle of Christ, the Greek source of gold, is in fact the biblical Ophir. And this makes Tarshish their land of silver as well, matching Jeremiah. It's all full circle proven at this point. Since creation, the Philippines has been the ancient land of gold, Havila. We pick up in ancient history in 1000 BC, the Philippines was mining gold in a gold rush status. Why? Because Solomon's navy went there. 800 to 100 BC, the Greeks were traveling to the Philippines for gold and silver, their main source, mind you, and they were picking up those same Phoenician routes as the Greeks are originally the Phoenicians, even their language, the Greek language comes from the Phoenician language. Again, recorded in written history in the Periplus of the Erythian Sea in 100 AD and the map from 43 AD from Pomponius Mila. No mystery, the Chinese record this as the land, mountains, isles of gold in 200 BC, 200 AD, 300 AD, and 982 AD and beyond. Gold of Philippine origin was found in a dig in ancient Egypt dated the first century as well. How did that get there? In 1200 AD, the Muslims arrive in the Philippines and they call it the land of gold. Never lost in history. Then Magellan arrives and in his margin notes of Barbosa's journal, he scratches out Lucos or Luzon, Lucan or Ilocos and he writes in Ophir and Tarshish. And now we'll pick it up. In 1522, Pigafetta recorded the Philippines as Tarshish and Ophir. 1490, even before that, Columbus also recorded the Isles just north of the equator in Southeast Asia, otherwise known today as the Philippines, as Ophir, Tarshish, the Garden of Eden, and Arsareth, the land of the lost tribes of Israel. In 1525, Sebastian Cabot is hired, and the King of Spain records the area that would become the Philippines as... Ophir and Tarshish. Still, in the 1600s, Jesuit Father Colin refers to the Philippines as Ophir and Tarshish. Later in the 1600s, Dominican Gregorio Garcia still located Ophir in the Philippines. 1890, yep, even that late, former Prime Minister Pedro A. Paterno recorded Philippines as Ophir. And finally, contemporary and good friend of Jose Rizal, not only records the Philippines as ancient Ophir, but tells us Rizal knew it as well. Wow. See, we aren't bringing you new information. This isn't new doctrine, as some pastors have even accused. They just don't know. They haven't watched. They don't know. This is restoring an old truth that was known all through history, even in the time of Messiah, and even in the time up to the 1890s. Now, what happened then? That was when Spain was conquered and America took over, and they being the pawn of the British, who could not stand that Spain actually found Ophir, moved to squash this truth, because they couldn't prove it wrong, so they had to squash it. And then it disappears. But this history is all still there and very obvious and consistent through the ages even in the British Museum for that matter there is no other land on all of earth that has this history whatsoever of actually being called Ophir and Tarshish in history in record being called the land of gold in record consistently for thousands of years Etymologies, name games, cannot overcome this. No scholar has been able to overcome this, nor will they. As we keep saying and supporting over and over again, there is no debating. The Philippines is the land of gold in all of history. It is time this knowledge be restored and the prophecies that come with it. For those about to comment in ignorance, yep, we always get them every video. We dare you to watch Solomon's Gold series by The God Culture, the original channel to prove the Philippines is in fact Ophir and the Garden of Eden. Even here, 
We are breaking these into sound bites and clear points, but watch how all 100 clues tie together and this series will blow you away. Thank you for watching 100 Clues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell and like us on our new Facebook, The God Culture Space hyphen space original. If you wish to skip ahead, go to the God Culture YouTube channel and watch our Solomon's Gold series in English or Tagalog. There will be a link on the next screen. We can know this truth and be confident this belongs to the Philippines and no one can disprove it. Until next time.